It's about 35 years, I think, since I uh, last visited the building. But um, I did live here for six years, so I'm pretty familiar with the place in general. The story, really, of Park Road is, is one of myself and Terry Farrell, who was my business partner then, trying to find somewhere to live. Well, I think it's looking quite good. It's got a sort of um, slightly more permanent feel to it than it had when, when we first built it. We were a cooperative housing society of 40 people who got together as photographers, lawyers, state agents, various people who had nowhere to, to put their elderly mums. <laughs> people come and people go and buildings come and buildings go. But it's come to be a really good demonstration of the way things can adapt and change over a period of time. The thing about this building is it's incredibly cheap. So um, we had to find the simplest way of doing everything. We opted for having a aluminium, ribbed aluminium, skin which you can you can you can make around the corner by simply speeding up the rollers that it goes through it's the easiest thing in the world to make it go round we used to call it the the, the building that was clad in aluminium dustbin lids but it's really a compliment not a not a pejorative term people said initially you can't clad a building just in flimsy corrugated aluminium it's ridiculous here it is, here it is. Um, 45 years later, and it pretty well looks as good as the day it was put up. I don't know whether it was a first, but it was very early days to use cladding like that, and particularly on a tower building. You know, this wasn't a sort of three-storey house. It was, uh, what, 10 storeys, I think. And how it got planning consent, I do not know. We went down to see the chief planning officer building like this, next to Regent's Park, over my dead body, he said. I said, well, if it was an office building and it was glass and aluminium, would you approve it then? And he said, well, yeah, that would be different. I said, well, why? We lived there for six years. We had our first child there. Very fond memories, yes. <laughs> Oh, it's extraordinary. This is a rather extraordinary feeling, I must say. <laughs> OK, push the lift. New lift doors. The concept was to try and allow for as much flexibility and adaptability in terms of the size and number of flats over the future years of the building. You could have 14 bed sitters on one floor if you wanted to. Or, in fact, one flat. This flat is a wonderful example of that, actually, because they've, they've been very inventive with the way the space is used. But basically, this is a wall of, of the core here, and that's the width you've got to, to play with. So these are flat slabs, as you can see, no beams poking down. Um, there is an, an edge to it, and then these round columns keep the slabs apart. And so it, it's as simple as that. Four flats of floor initially. Um, with a long, thin flat down each side, the living room, bedroom and bedroom, and it's been united with the living room of the one-bedroom flat, which um, sits here, and then a bedroom in here. So you've got a terrific frontage looking over the... looking over the park, even for this one-bedroom flat. We said to ourselves, space is the thing. So we thought the answer was to build a building which was a maximum 
square footage, you know, at the minimum cost. And so the building had absolutely no finishes. Um, you know, concrete floor, wall, ceiling, um, a light bulbs hanging out on, on a piece of flex. And so the windows are very simple and very cheap. They're made by a manufacturer who made windows for buses, but they're, they're simple double glazed windows and bolted together edge to edge. You see the screws here, and they just shunt up against each other all around the building in a continuous band. You know, we're saying, look, we've stripped the thing to the bone. Now, now it's over to you. you. We know you're going to fit it out. Or all of you are going to do it differently. And we encourage that. We, there's no idea of imposing interior design onto people. It's often mistaken for an office block has no balconies, no palatial entrance hall, and no roof garden. Stark simplicity of industrial design. That's my wife and my daughter, Chloe. You weren't building a monument for a lifetime. You know, you were building something out of very cheap materials which could be adapted and changed and so on. I, I'm, I've surprised myself, in a way, having just sort of thrown myself at it in a devil-may-care way, like you do when you're young. But what's nice is that it has changed, it's adapted, and, and it's sort of shown that the building has a, a, a potentially really rather a long life.